dear <coughs> viewer students uh, let's have another discussion on the same poem the landlady written by margaret atwood uh, in the earlier session we discussed the same poem and we discussed the poet's life in brief and her uh, uh, attitude and her uh, contribution to literature and her achievements and her uh, intellectual uh, personality with name and fame all that we discussed about the <coughs> writer about the poet and we uh, discussed the as as an introduction to the poem the landlady uh, what kind of uh, the theme this poem has and what kind of attitude is presented by the writer uh, what is intended here all that we discussed in the introduction and then we read the text of the poem completely uh going line by line we explained it so now you have understood the poem uh, the text of the poem with uh, a good comprehension and with the help of that uh, what we have to uh, go for another uh, session see to know how to answer different uh, long answer questions and the short answer questions and the uh, annotative lines so to answer the essay type uh, uh, <coughs> the answers uh, the questions to answer the questions that uh, uh, <coughs> require essay type answers you will have to know the issues discussed with which you can critically analyze Uh, poem, and uh, you have to uh, take up the ideology out of the poem that represents the writer. Uh, the ideology uh, the writer presents in the poem that is also very important, and uh, the points of views. See, with different points of views, uh, we can read the poem. we can uh, approach the poem uh, with different uh, <coughs> points of views so the approaches uh, the different approaches are also possible so that we have to discuss here so let us uh, uh, know how margaret atwood's tendency of protest is uh, uh brought out in this poem tendency of protest see basically uh margaret atwood is a an activist in uh, the women rights movements she is basically an activist in women rights movements so whatever that uh, violates the women's rights whatever that uh, uh disturbs or distorts the women's rights she protests against it she uh dislikes it and she speaks against that and here also in this poem we can observe that uh margaret atwood's tendency of protest is well expressed throughout the poem how let us see being an activist uh, here she resides in that uh, building in that house she stays in that house as a tenant that uh, building belongs to that landlady and this landlady uh she violates the rights of uh, the speaker as well the rights of the other uh, people uh, living in the ground floor so this poem shows her tendency 
uh, of protest against the violation of women rights in any way and this poem deals with uh, how an elderly woman interferes into uh, and dominates over the life of a younger woman so this elderly woman landlady just because she is elderly she interferes in, interferes into the woman another woman just because she is younger and here it shows this elderly woman stands uh, for tradition the old tradition that has been accepted and practiced uh, from centuries together and uh, to supervise uh, the young uh, has been sanctioned as the right for the elders so this elderly woman's uh, interference into the woman's life the young woman's life is protested against is opposed by the speaker this elderly woman exercises her domination with two authorities uh, that is one two authorities of one being elderly the landlady has got cultural sanction traditional sanction to dominate and to interfere into the life of the eng okay it is it is one uh, <coughs> interference it is one domination and another of the second being the owner of the house she has got a sanction of uh, the financial status as the owner of the uh, building owner status she has being the owner of the house in which the speaker is a tenant that owner has got that uh, uh, authority to interfere into the life of this woman and this also the writer protests even such domination and violation of women rights are questioned by uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, writer the speaker and this is how we can interpret this uh, poem it it is one issue the another what kind of uh, domination or what kind of uh, the interference we are uh, uh, supposed to extract or we are supposed to discuss uh, after we read this poem after we read the text of the poem completely here there are two types of dominations two types of interference that the two type of interference is uh, opposed here is protested against what are these two types of dominations one atwood talks of the two types of dominations uh, that is the violation of women rights one is of domination over the psychology of a woman the mental interference the mental domination is one domination and uh, the a woman or many women live as tenants in landlady's building uh, and they are mentally interfered and another is physical violation of physical freedom of all these women including the speaker so these are the two types of violations of women rights or the distortion of the personal freedom of uh, <coughs> the speaker the landlady interferes into everyday activities of all uh, the tenants as well as the speaker all the activities are interfered by that landlady she 
trespasses and encroaches speakers and other women's life while they are eating while they are sleeping while they are uh, uh, um, uh, living in their own privacy she uh, interferes she enters into their privacy like uh, smell the speaker is not allowed to uh, get her personal uh, things done uh, even uh, the speaker is restricted to use sufficient light see even there is a restriction to use sufficient light so these are all the physical requirements that one desires for one requires for living a comfortable life but these are all uh, 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 restricted by this landlady and it is nothing but uh, the domination over uh, a woman or over a speaker uh, that uh, collapses her liberty that distorts her liberty or freedom there is a tone of protest against such physical domination uh, here the landlady can be read uh, as a symbol of uh, fear symbol of fear and tyrannical and uh, dictatorial intruder and the symbol of irritation to the speaker and other tenants also so the landlady's uh, building it is so this is how she restricts them physically and also she interferes them psychologically mentally all the tenants as the speaker was uh, all the tenants as the speaker here um, let us take uh, the poet herself was obsessed with uh, the landlady's uh, presence uh, even in their dreams so what does it mean even in their dreams they will uh, find the presence of the landlady they will uh, hear the raw voice of that landlady even their uh, uh, sleep is disturbed and they will uh, uh, shout and get up <coughs> in the bed so it shows that they are obsessed with the presence of that landlady and it is the mental interference it is the uh, violation of the psycho psychological freedom of uh, an individual whether it is a woman or a man it doesn't matter everybody should uh, have that uh, mental freedom otherwise we will lose we will have no meaning of life the speaker finds uh, the dream of her daring escape See, the speaker finds the dream of a daring escape in the snow from terror like uh, landlady but even in the snow she gets hallucination of the landlady's vast face a bounding and speaker gets up in the bed and shouts and this shows how she is mentally suffering from the interference of that landlady so these are the two uh, things we can uh, discuss here and another is uh, the caricature of this landlady uh, which is sketched uh, which is uh, pictured uh, throughout this poem let us see this caricature of the landlady we can have these uh, important uh, <coughs> uh, features these important qualities what are the uh, features of this caricature what are the traits of this caricature let us see one this landlady is uncultured and animalistic how in the beginning of the poem itself the writer uh, begins with uh, saying the house of this landlady is uh, like a <coughs> liar means animal's house it shows she is uncultured she is not like human being she is like animal and the second 
point is lady of a raw voice usually a woman uh, will speak in a low voice woman speaks in uh, mellow voice that voice is soft sweet and very desirable one very uh, um, liking uh, <coughs> voice but this lady's voice is raw voice it shows how rough she is she, how unwomanly uh, she is that is well said <coughs> in the beginning of the poem the third one interfering into everybody's life she has that bad habit of uh, interfering into everybody's life not only into the life of the speaker even into the life of all other who are the tenants of her building and the, and the next point uh, present everywhere she is omnipresent like uh, the god she is omnipresent she will be present everywhere she speaks uh, to um, one and another uh, in the same time and her voice is so loud that it uh, uh um, reaches uh, each uh, and every corner and nooks of the building and the next point is landlady's physical appearance so how this landlady is see this landlady is huge in body she is bulky she is uh, not swollen and raucous face and she is uh, a solid bacon and she is like a slab which is immutable which is unshakable so these are the details of her physical appearance and immutable and a heavy slab so is immutable and heavy slab i mentioned and dominating personality she, all the things should happen under her supervision that's why she presides over the meager eating of the speaker and she um, robs her days and even that the speaker has to take the time for rent and even the restricted uh, um, the light is also allowed and all this is uh, what we see the dominating personality of uh, that landlady and then uh, over possessiveness in uh, uh, that character over possessiveness means she Uh, possesses she has over possession that everybody should be under her supervision everybody should uh, act according to her order Every, everybody should behave uh, <coughs> as she feels happy as she feels uh, um, good she as she feels desirable and then lack of common sense lack of common sense being a woman elderly one should have some common sense that uh, she should not uh, get into somebody's house unwelcome and uh, she should not uh, be present at the time when uh, <coughs> somebody is eating uh, with uh, her, um, her her own time in privacy so this is something uh, common sense for anybody should have but this lady landlady doesn't have that common sense and self centered she never bothers about anybody's happiness or anybody's presence and she wants to live as she likes she wants to live as she wishes whether it is uh, uh, <coughs> not comfortable for others or not it doesn't matter for her what matters is her own happiness her own feeling her own wish uh, matters rather than anybody else's Uh, haunting personality, mentally and physically. She is haunting personality, haunting everybody, mentally and physically. She is so terrible. She is so horrible. Even in dreams also she uh, appears and uh, horrifies <coughs> the people. And in that way she is uh, uh, haunting personality and she haunts uh, everybody mentally and physically. So these are. the important uh, uh, <coughs> features these are the important uh, qualities of uh, the character or the caricature of this landlady which is pictured in this poem by the speaker while pic giving the picture of this landlady she expresses uh, in a tone of protest 
against uh, the, the tradition because this landlady is the symbol of tradition and culture that has been practiced from centuries together. As the result, this landlady behaves like that as a supervisor of the younger generation. And uh, uh, <coughs> the, this is how we have to uh, analyze the poem with the different uh, uh, approaches. I think you could understand the poem completely. On the basis of this uh, understanding, you can answer various types of questions that uh, expect the essay type answers, that expect the short answers and also the lines uh, to be annotated. If you go through the poem uh, once again, you can see uh, which lines are uh, more attractive and those lines can be uh, taken uh, for annotation in the examination and you have to explain the meaning of those lines and you have to uh, <coughs> identify the voice and identify the poet and poem and how that meaning is connected with the total thing that you have to discuss you have to write in the annotation I think this much is uh, enough as for this poem is concerned and uh, here it is a list of uh, <coughs> that uh, woman that landlady's uh, uh, qualities landlady's traits as a person you can go through them so that you can see what kind of a caricature is presented by the speaker in this poem and uh, <coughs> what uh, different uh, uh, issues can be taken for the short answers. So, imprisoned life of the speaker uh, can be asked for short answer. Living in no sufficient light, what does it mean uh, throughout the poem? Meager eating. See, how, how does it mean? How it can be uh, analyzed? Meager eating means a woman uh, is not so free even to eat as sufficient as he wants, as sufficient as he uh, feels and tenant even for time and this is uh, how that uh, <coughs> her life is interfered uh, by the culture, by this tradition and speaker dares not to go out means uh, just because she is a woman she is not allowed to go out freely without the permission of uh, anybody in the house. So, it, even her going out is also supervised by that landlady means by our culture, by our tradition that has been practiced from the centuries together. And speaker being uh, uh, supervised by this uh, kind of a culture uh, from centuries together uh, dares not to escape, the speaker dares not to escape from this culture. And that is very, very uh, important uh, analysis that you can make. So for annotations I have given some examples here and you can <coughs> go through the poem any line can be taken for annotation for that matter and if any uh, line is taken you can easily identify the lines when you understand all the lines of the poem uh, better and uh, when you repeatedly read the poem for many times that helps you to identify the lines and their meaning. Uh, <coughs> with this much, I think I put an end to my presentation in the second uh, session of this poem. Thank you. Thank you one and all.